Now, we all know that if there's one thing I hate, it's merfolk. If there's a second thing I hate, it's Esper Vile. Throw a playset of Troll of Kaza Doom in Esper Vile, though, and I think we can talk. I think we can make something work here. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher, aka Thraben Yu here for another Legacy video, and today we're going to be messing around with Esper Vile. Uh, now, Nicholas C. sent me a donation decklist for Esper Vile, but the decklist was cut off and I didn't hear a response back when I reached out, so I dug through the 5-0 decklist and I found two different Esper Vile decklists, and I liked one of them better than the other. In case you've never played with or against Esper Vile before, you are a three-color Aether Vial deck list that focuses on ETB triggers on creatures, and oftentimes reusing those ETB creatures by blinking them with something like a Soul Herder. And this deck seeks to have sort of ultimate inevitability versus other fair decks with like Yorian as a companion, as well as cards like Solitude, and if you reuse a Solitude trigger like every turn, you are probably going to absolutely steamroll fair decks. But this comes at the cost of speed, and my biggest general complaint about decks like Esper Vile is that they are glacially slow to actually end the game. They are incredibly good at not losing the game, but they're very slow at winning the game, which is something that I kind of dislike. Which is why I actually think today's deck list is absolutely brilliant deck building. It adds Troll of Kaza Doom and Reanimate to a deck that otherwise just doesn't have good early game plays. So you can get a troll onto the battlefield on like turn two, and that offers you an early way to actually close the game versus combo decks or other decks where your inevitability really matters. And if this doesn't work out and your opponent, you know, casts source of plashers or whatever, no big deal. You'll play your like fair grindy game. And I think this is really cool and I'm super excited to try this. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com as well as Cool Stuff Inc. And remember, if you need paper magic cards, check out Cool Stuff Inc. and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your order at checkout. So this is Francis York Morgan's 5-0 deck list, which is Esper Vile with one honorary volcanic island that we'll get to in just a second. The mana base is definitely a little bit ambitious with four copies of Wasteland. That's something that I've really disliked about Esper Vile. You end up with a lot of multicolor uh, or multi -co like colored mana pip creatures in a mana base that is much greedier than something like, say, monocolored 60 card D&D. But the Wastelands can do some really cool things when paired with something like Samwise the Stouthearted. And like we all know from playing decks like Death and Taxes that Wasteland plus Aether Vial just feels really good. Although it feels a lot worse than it used to be with common answers like Teferi and Prismatic Ending floating around that can stop the Vial from just ticking up forever. Otherwise, there's a lot of just really solid legacy playables here. Um, although this was one I had to look up. I didn't know this one. Uh, Jarena Dauntless General. When it ETBs, exile target player's graveyard, and you can sacrifice it to give humans you control hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. We are not playing a full playset of griefs. One of the primary reasons here being that we are a three-color deck and we're not base black. We're really like base blue white, um, kind of just kind of looking at the numbers here. So playing the full set of these doesn't necessarily make sense. And I'm hoping that the troll also helps with the colored mana pip issue by being a swamp cycler that can go and get you your underground sea or whatever it is you need. As far as the sideboard is concerned, we are going to play two more copies of griefs for the matchup where that is truly important. And then there are a couple of silver bullets for specific matchups. 
And I'm not sure whether or not this is going to be worth the mana base strain, but these cards are really powerful, so it wouldn't surprise me if the answer is yes. Uh, yeah, I think with that being said, uh, we can go ahead and hop into the league here. Let's battle. All right, I am playing against the very weird Yorian Cloud Post deck that my opponent played the other day. <sighs> opponent has inevitability over me. Not happy with this five card hand. I really want like Wasteland quite badly. I, I think this hand's too bad. I think I go to five here. One, two, this isn't that good. One, two, three, four, five, I guess. Orcish Bowmasters is just like not good in this matchup. It might be better to keep reanimate so that I can drop a troll and have a reasonable clock. Um, but definitely unhappy about this. I don't think I go after that savannah. I'm gonna grab underground C and just get this ticking up. Sure. Well, Bowmasters came back. Not super pleased about that fact. This is probably fine. I can grief pitch Bowmasters this turn and then reanimate it next turn. Let's assume that I do want to draw a recruiter. All right. Grief, pitch bowmasters. And I may even find something better to reanimate, such as a primeval titan in my opponent's hand. A solitude. That's not currently castable. I'm just gonna take their crop rotation. Uh yeah, but we can see the multicolor strain on the mana base here by not being able to ponder and then play a black card. So let's Reanimate the grief. My opponent drew a white card. So they are going to pitch a card for solitude to take out my grief. I believe that blanks the grief trigger. I got two cards for it. That's not the end of the world. I do need to attack my opponent's mana so that they can't just copy Cloud Post on their turn. And then I have a land on top of my deck to deploy Recruiter next turn. But this is not the pace of the game that I really want to play. All right. So I will fetch. I have white, white to think about. Don't have black, black to think about outside of another grief. Tundra seems fine. I'll drop recruiter. This is, that was put there from the battlefield this turn. I'll probably just get soul herder and get that whole thing going. I want the Magus of the Moon, but that's in the sideboard. I'll pick up Soul Herder. I mostly just want additional copies of the card Wasteland. Sure. Finding Solitude, unfortunately for me, which means this whole Soul Herder loop thing will probably end up getting disrupted. Not super happy about that. Do a little love tap. Cycle this land. Pick up like another underground sea. That I do have black black for a grief that I draw. Do a soul herder. Move to end of turn. Use this ability. Roll grow soul herder. Do this. Um, so my opponent probably hard casts their own solitude on their turn. To get rid of my soul herder don't have two of those. I can get my own Solitude, but I don't have the next land drop. Not a fan. Let's grab a Strix. We'll just get something that gives me a redraw at a Wasteland. Taking out a Celestia Sanctuary matters a lot. So here's the Solitude. Taking out the Soul Herder, which is fine. That's a troll. I'm going to start by trying to cantrip and see what I find. A Charming Prince. That's fine. Am I Swamp Cycling this troll? I'm probably Swamp Cycling this troll still. Pick up a Scrubland. Drop this. 
play Charming Prince. At this point, I can flicker the Recruiter of the Guard, and now that I have the fifth land drop, I can get Solitude. Yes. Grab Solitude for Solitude. Uh, my issue is that, like, my opponent is starting to just get to, like, primeval titan amounts of mana, and unless I find another wasteland, I'm just going to probably lose to my opponent getting a bunch more land drops, either directly or indirectly. Yeah. I really wanted a wasteland on that turn for that reason. Something else is happening as well. Is that just Yori into hand? Is a March of Otherworldly Light. Sure. A reanimate. Is reanimate now better than solitude now? Probably. Could reanimate solitude. I think it's better to just reanimate troll. So I will do that. And then I will put Yorian to hand. I have an emergency card that I can pitch if I need to. I'm not going to attack. While I'm fine with the attack, I'm less fine with something like Swords to Plowshares on the troll, and then my opponent gets to attack with Solitude uncontested. Alright, that is Yorian to their hand. And they're just going to immediately play the Yorian. Do I want to pitch my Yorian to stop them from Solitude-ing? I really don't want to lose this troll. I think yes. I think I am going to assume that I will do better on the value train than they will. And we'll just crash in with Troll a couple of times, try to end the game. I can bounce their Yorian back to their hand. It's a big difference in clock if I do it. Okay. Accordingly, I will do that. Bash in for 9. Um, I'm going to save this to cast it. That is unfortunately a Primeval Titan, which comes with two more lands. Yep. Not great for me. I think I'm going to keep the troll in hand still. <sighs> that helps a lot. So this is three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve total mana. Uh, yeah, this is not looking great. I'll get this out of the way. That six more life is such a big deal, though. I get to do nine more damage, but Eye of Ugin is coming to exile two of my things. I need to hit another land drop and, like, play a second troll and have my opponent stumble or something. Or I can just find Wasteland. Finding Wasteland and taking out Eye of Ugin helps a lot if they don't activate it this turn. All right, my opponent casts up the Beanstalk. And that's it. Uh, again, I'm going to try to hold this. Does my opponent have activation mana? Three. Yeah, very easily. I think I'm going to narrowly lose this one. My last couple of draws just haven't been what they needed to be. Like, if I get this second troll into play successfully, we can talk, but I've just whiffed on land. I also just never saw a cantrip to help find a wasteland to deal with this nonsense. Okay. Probably doesn't matter. I don't know that it was correct to do that fetch. Sure. Oh, you want to copy first? Sure, that's fine. All right. Oh, we had Emrakul mana. 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I am at below 15 life. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, GG's. The deck kind of just bottomed out on me. Um, Magus of the Moon will help out a lot with this matchup. My opponent's mana base is incredibly greedy. This is for non-creature spells. It helps with some green suns and stuff. I'll think about this. Maybe interested in these. Maybe interested in this. I don't need to nuke my opponent's graveyard. This card can go. Force of Negation does not stop a lot of critical stuff. That can go. This is not a Plague Engineer matchup. This gets me Magus. Grief, grief. I don't think I care about Lauren blowing up, up the beanstalk. I think I'm going to remove that as an option. I think just always having an answer to a primeval titan when it hits play matters. Or alternatively, stopping some of that stuff from happening. 
Um, Orcish Bowmaster is not exactly great, despite my opponent having up the Beanstalk. Skyclave Apparition, also not strong. Um, let's go Skyclaves out for these two. And I'm going to go down one Bowmasters to keep this, because Bowmasters is just not particularly good. Um, I am unhappy to be playing this matchup, though. Uh, I am going to keep this with the hope that I just hit a land drop in my next couple of draws to play Magus of the Moon on curve. I'm not super expecting basic planes from my opponent. All right. Land pass. Um, that's not good sequencing. Collector oof. Okay. I'll grab Volcanic Island. I'm going to brainstorm lock myself here and lose my mind when I hit zero lands. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to put back swords, swords here. As I'm not immediately going to have access to white. I Let's confirm that I have a basic swamp before I just pitch this game. I do. Well, I can swamp cycle later. So accordingly, I'm just going to pick up some mana and cast a ponder here. Reef's okay. I'm just going to shuffle though. An Aether Vial. Perfectly timed for the collector roof that my opponent has that I don't really know if it should be in the deck. Like, I am a Yorian deck with four artifacts with activated abilities. Sure. Um, I do not want to grief prior to troll. Troll gets me my black mana. Um, what if I do it off Strix? Let's do it off of Strix so I don't get got by um, Solitude specifically. Not going to get got by that. Oh, my opponent naturally has Forest in hand. God damn it. That's very frustrating. I'll take their Green Sun. You can have Collector Oof. Um, here's kind of to hoping that this slows down my opponent enough that I can cobble together a win. Yep, that's fine. So let's brainstorm now, and then I can use the troll as a shuffle. How do I feel about solitude? I don't think I need to solitude the collector roof. Let's just get rid of vile and recruiter, which is not currently very easily castable. I'll swamp cycle the troll to get my basic swamp, which I will play. And we'll call it a turn. Obviously no Magus of the Moon attack. All right, my opponent's attacking in with their Collector Roof. I'm not interested in a block. And that's that. So I will ponder to start this off. Eh. Lavinia. Not currently castable. But an okay card in a few turns. That is a crop rotation. So my opponent's plan is to, I guess, get a forest or a swords to plowshares. I see. So they're going to swords my magus. I do not have a counter for that. So that occurs. That's fine. I think my opponent did that turn poorly. Because now I have access to main phase mana of different colors than what I had a second ago. Um, so I think they're supposed to just take two points of damage so that I don't gain access to the ability to cast multi-pip cards. Um, I'll fetch. Need white mana here. Rubland is better than Tundra in this instance. Dial Bowmaster. King Collector Oof. Then I am fine. Raiding the orc army for collector oof directly. I'm doing fine life total wise. Yorian goes to hand. That's slightly annoying. I do have solitude to help out with that. It's an awkward draw. I don't like super want to wasteland any of my opponent's lands right now, but I also don't really want my opponent to cast a Yorian immediately if possible. Um, I guess I do this now. Take out a Savannah last turn. Okay. Oh, it's holding that back. Am I supposed to get rid of Endurance? Probably. Keeping the pressure up matters here. 
just taking out my opponent's flicker target is probably reasonable. Reanimate. Um, I can reanimate a collector oof. It's not really what I want to be doing. Opponent cleared my graveyard, unfortunately. So I think this turn will be just like put my own Yorian into my hand, and then I can answer their stuff with my stuff if need be. Um, Orcish Bowmasters is about to do some work though. So up the beanstalk, trigger happens. Orcish Bowmaster shoots my opponent. They're at 14. And they'll presumably then blink up the beanstalk as well. And then the same process will repeat at end of turn. And I'll ping my opponent again. Okay. Um, I could push some damage this turn. I don't think I have to. Um, it's probably just better to, right? Like, I attack with everything. My opponent blocks one. I lose one critter. I reanimate that critter. And then blank. I probably end up doing significantly more damage by doing that. Get blown out by endurance for taking this line. Maybe that's enough of an, a reason to just not. All right. Yeah, I think I've convinced myself that that's enough of a reason to just not take that line. So we'll blink Orcish Bowmasters and Solitude. Move to the end step. Ping my opponent. Solitude the Yorian out of the way before they can find a Caracas to save it. And we've probably got about a two turn clock worth of damage here. Sure. That's annoying. I'll ping their face. Glacial Chasm and Tabernacle. All right. That's a really bad play. Wow, that's a really bad play. Okay. Grab like a Tundra. Five creatures in play. Pay for all of them. Don't pay for Solitude. Pay for the rest. Reanimate Solitude. Take out Primeval Titan. Um, I am just going to Swamp Cycle this for another land drop. There should be one more Scrubland and two Underground Seas remaining. Last turn. I potentially am going to time out to this opponent. Uh, I got forward waiting for them and I did other things. Like uh, set up a green screen to block the sun and convert to a standing desk. That's another Primeval Titan. Uh, my opponent has not had the uh, like green suns and other X spells that I potentially could have stopped with a Lavinia, uh, which is really annoying. I think from here my opponent just Emrakul's me. I'm just going to concede. <laughs> GG's. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com. It's just the best place to keep your online deck lists, and it's also a great tool if you're a competitive tournament player. Uh, what I'm showcasing here is its compare feature. You can take two deck lists, plug in links to both of them, and then see which cards are unique to deck list A, which cards are unique to deck list B, and which cards are shared with both of them. And you can do this both with the main deck and the sideboard. If you are looking to fine tune a deck list, this is a great way to do that. All right, here we go. I have a pretty mediocre hand. Uh, well, we know what we need. I need more counter spells. We're playing against the Creative Technique deck. Um, this needs to be Underground C. And we're going to look for another copy of Force of Will. Um, nope, those cards are not Force of Will. I'm very scared. Again, my deck does not produce an early game clock unless I have the reanimate package, which this draw does not. Um, I will immediately brainstorm, try to fix this hand. Uh, Wasteland helps. Wasteland helps a lot. So I'm going to put Solitude and maybe Skyclave, or maybe other order in case I don't shuffle. Skyclave and Solitude back into the deck. Uh, this is black, or sorry, this is green. Um, let's attack the red mana here. And I need to think about setting a stop on my upkeep to use Lorien Revealed. Damn it, another one. That stop. To use Lorien Revealed to shuffle so that I don't redraw those cards. This takes one blue card out of my hand. 
which I'm not the biggest fan of, but it's where we're at, because I don't want to redraw those. I want fresh looks at cards. Uh, so I'll play Vile and pass. We missed on Wasteland, which is what I wanted to take this out. Oh my gosh, it's another tap land. So you're telling me there's a chance. I'll tick this up. That's not what I'm looking for. So I am presumably casting Recruiter of the Guard now. Don't know what I am getting. Grief? Grief is the plan. Uh, I have to pitch the troll here. Uh, so let's just hope there's only one enabler over there, which is somewhat unlikely. Uh, but here we are. Okay. I feel like this is a marvelous fluke in which I am being teased like I have a chance to win. I don't know that that hand was a keep with like the eight mana enabler being the thing. You just top deck one. All right. So this is going to cascade into a creative technique. And now they're going to demonstrate it to give me a copy of this spell. Force of Will enters the revealed card zone. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. Counter one copy of creative technique. Force of Will, pitching Baleful Strix, target the other one. Ugh. Uh, that does still leave my opponent with a 5-3 flyer and the mana to try again. So, like, I've still got problems, but uh, this is why I don't play... Uh... Let me rephrase. This is why I don't suggest playing creative technique competitively. Uh, that troll does not do a lot right now. Let's fetch. I guess I have another grief in my deck, so black mana is good. Let's get underground C then. Swords to Plowshares, that critter out of the way. Yorian to hand. Attack for a mighty one point of damage. And pray that things go well. All right, good stuff. Um, what's my density here? Higher density at two. So I guess I will leave at two. Rewarded. Tap. Yes. Strix. Draw land. Raw Bowmasters. Not what I'm looking for. Crash on in. When it goes to 21, I will Swamp Cycle this creature so that I can make a new land drop. And I'll pass the turn, intending to cast an Orcish Bowmasters and keep my pressure up. All right, we're getting lucky here. We're dodging. So I'll Bow Boy. My opponent goes back to 20. I think I'm hard casting my Yorian, so I'm just going to leave the vial on 2. Nope. All right. Uh, actually, I still just hard cast the Yorian, right? And then I just recruit her for a new blue card. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. 1, 2, 3. Being my opponent, um, I guess I'll draw my card and then tutor. Oh, it's a blue card. Fuck yeah. Yes, I will use this ability. I probably just get another blue card, like a Baleful Strix. I can put it in off of Vial if nothing else happens. Otherwise, I'm like working towards having multiple blue cards in hand. Yeah, actually, I think I just hold this. Right, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's still a two turn clock without casting that. Yeah. And I have kind of a cute line available. Um, at this point, though, I am going to start ticking this up, just in case things get weird. All right. So send in with everything. Now, at this point, I have the line of Bounce Yorian available to me if, for some reason, I need to do that. I have multiple Force of Wills available. All right. And we're done. Yeah, uh, Creative Technique has... Some scary variants in it. Lavinia, great. Meddling Mage, great. Magus of the Moon, you know it. Great. Force of Negation, juicy. Grief, delicious. Surgical Extraction, actually kind of interesting. I don't think I'm going to end up playing that. I'm not super interested in Lauren or Plague Engineer. 
for Skyclave Apparition. The Swords and Solitudes technically have text but are unexciting. The same is true for Orcish Bowmasters. Um, Jarena can do some interesting block things, but is mostly just a black card, I think. A black-white card, I guess. So if I board in these seven, I would need to cut three more. So this could be like one Swords to Plowshares or Solitude better. Probably Swords. I want to have access to a Solitude for recruiter purposes. Actually, is Bowmasters better than either of those? Bowmasters starts doing damage early on. I guess that's a thing. Uh, let's try this. Um, I'm treating Bowmasters as... Something that do, does roughly two damage per turn cycle, which is super unexciting. Not universally good in the format. It is just generically quite good. Um, I would keep this against a lot of decks. But this is a deck that Force of Will isn't super great against. And when they're on the play, they also can just like board in Tybalt's Trickery and kind of go under a lot of the stuff that I can do. I'm going to just get more looks at counter spells here. Um, how do I feel about turn two troll? Like, is that enough of a clock that I keep this? And I think so. I think I keep this and pitch Samwise. This has the, like, roughly the same number of looks as the previous hand does, but has, ooh, much greater flexibility to finish the thought. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm in. Uh, the plan has really changed. It now becomes Grief, Pitch, Troll, Reanimate, Grief. I wish I could just take my opponent's land here. Um, uh, yeah, I'll take a creative technique. And then I'll fetch an Underground Sea specifically. And reanimate this, taking the other creative technique. Uh, which now puts my opponent on 6 mana instead of 5, and two of the creative techniques are now out of their deck. Um, which probably means that they won't necessarily just have a deterministic kill on my stuff. Ooh, yeah. Uh, let's try to hit some more land drops while we're at it. Um, well, we kind of did. I'm not ready for Soul Herder out of this stuff. I'll intend on shuffling away Soul Herder and Reanimate, I think. Keep a bunch of blue cards. Crash in with grief. All right. Upkeep. I will island cycle this. Grab tundra. Do a land drop here. I am maybe supposed to brainstorm and look for another grief immediately. But my opponent has multiple boarding parties, so I don't know that that's really going to go the way that I want it to go. So I think I am just going to not brainstorm. I'm a little scared of brainstorm locking myself right now. All right, so the cascade happens. Getting a creative technique. My opponent demonstrates it. So I am about to get a free shuffle. This is probably an okay opportunity to go ahead and brainstorm. Ugh. Um, do I want third land? I can find third land pretty easily. I'm going to put back land land here. Let's demonstrate and hit a counterspell again very skillfully. Orcish Bowmasters. I mean, I'll cast it, but it's not great. So I'll Bowmasters ping my opponent here. Guess I'll counter one of these now before something weird potentially hits play. So creative technique. Pitching one copy of Brainstorm. Then we'll see how bad this ends up being. It is a Phoenix. As Cascade. This will get into the final copy of Creative Technique. Alright. I get a Ponder. Ursa Plowshares is not bad. I can swing for the fences and try to get Force of Will or Force of Negation. A lot of this is like, does my opponent randomly hit a Maelstrom Wanderer that gives their stuff haste? I think I am going to accept third land and swords, and hope that I am not dead. Damn it. <laughs> so this is probably going to result in enough damage that I am going to die. I have a couple of blocks. Okay. If I block, 
say both boarding parties. I'll take three and what, 15? Yeah, I'll still be taking lethal damage. Oh, that's the uh, copy one, so they can copy Recluse. Sure. Um, anything spicy in here that I need to worry about? Not really. The Apex Devastator is something that I would have expected. This is annoying to scroll through. Yeah, this is mostly normal stuff. I can comfortably concede here. That's fine. I guess in the situations like that, taking out Maelstrom Wanderer can buy me another turn that might make these actually better than swords, but they do require a white card, and if you kind of look at these numbers, it's not as high as you might like. I guess the Yorian always represents a white card. Awkward. So this starts out with a grief and has a force of will. That's fine. I am going to keep it. But this is not going to present a reasonable clock. So I can punch a hole, but I can't necessarily take advantage of that. All right, let's see what's going on. Why is my... I'm, I'm so surprised my opponent is keeping these hands. Like, I guess you draw into stuff enough of the time, but I don't know. There, there is a mathematical answer to that question, and I just don't know the answer to it. Am I playing a 2-1 with Flash? No. Um, I am going to play Baleful Strix. It takes me off a blue card for Force of Will, but my hand's bad right now. I, I think I have to take advantage of the time that I have to build up something better. Uh, all right. So do this. Go up in Underground C. Go to combat. Attack for one. Bring my opponent to 19. Play Samwise. Return the land. Uh, you're my ring bearer. Pass turn. Next turn I can put Yorian into my hand for a blue card if I miss out on everything else. Um, am I dead? Some portion of the time here, the answer is yes. So creative technique happens. Opponent will demonstrate it. Grief, this is not the ideal time here. I'll... Take a card, um, but then I'm kind of hands off here, and my opponent gets to go wild. Um, that alone I am not beating. Um, I am comfortable conceding here. GG's. Um, I'm going to keep this hand. I find it awkward, but I don't think it's worth throwing back. It has a lot of selection. Just like awkward being the multicolored wasteland deck in terms of evaluating openers. I might even want to be throwing this wasteland back after my opponent leads on basic island. All right, no shuffle on there, Ponder. Am I supposed to brainstorm here? I'm going to ponder and take the most looks at something like Force of Will. I didn't find it, but... It was worth looking. I don't know if my opponent is a control or combo deck yet. Gut feeling says combo, but I can provide no data to prove this. I'm going to brainstorm before making a land drop here. See if my opponent like uses a daze on this. Uh, grief and reanimate is quite good. So it's grief, pitch, reanimate. Um, I'm going to send back swords to plowshares and this wasteland, I think. So I will make the land drop. Grief now, prior to fetching. Just in case a wild stifle is over there. Okay, uh, I will take my opponent's infernal tutor. Then I will fetch. Uh, we want scrub land. I will reanimate the Grief, and then I'll take LED. That makes a top deck Infernal Tutor slightly less scary. I now know what I need to be pondering for. The opponent's unfortunately on a lot of basics right now. Solitude is not what I want to see. Do a little damage. 
and start looking for like force of will. Oh, force of will. Fantastic. Uh, one, two, three. No shuffle. I'm not going to show Wasteland yet, so we'll make this land drop and pass the turn. My opponent's thinking, which is probably not good for me. All right, that is a Wastelandable land for next turn. But I'm going to assume that this turn is my opponent doing some hot nonsense. Beseech the Mirror. So that is only searching for the card, right? That was not bargained? So that is only searching? You can search. I am unfortunately probably going to end up redrawing a land. I don't have to redraw both of them necessarily. So, Wasteland the Underground Sea. And attack with grief. Um, I should have... Well, sometimes I want to cycle Lorien Revealed. And not redraw that land. And then I can put Yorian into my hand. I think the top card of my deck is like a Tundra or something like that. I guess I could have done that in my own upkeep. Uh, Cabal Ritual resolves. Lion's Eye Diamond resolves. This Beseech is not resolving. Where is it? It has one card left. Just, I'm just going to force this one. It's probably fine. I don't know that it's correct to, though. So, Tundra... Yorian to hand, attack with grief, put opponent to 10. Next turn, I will cast Yorian and grief another card out of their hand. And I imagine that my opponent can't win from that low of resources. All right, land drop. And winning game one is big, because in game one, I have a lot of really bad cards in my deck. Fetch. Um, I have white, white, or blue, blue already. Grab another underground sea. Do Yorian. Okay, yeah, my opponent's done with me. Uh, very happy to win game one here. Meddling Mage, Lavinia. Force of Negation are great. Prismatic Ending can technically do some stuff. It's a maybe. Grief is good. These six cards here fall into the I could board these in, but I'm not excited about it pile. So I am not excited about Swords to Plowshares. All of those can go. I am not super excited about Solitude. I might leave one as a tutor target to take out something random like a Shouldred that my opponent could sideboard into. Not super excited about this card. I'm probably playing it. Both sides technically do stuff in the matchup, just not a lot of stuff. Plague Engineer is a little bit of insulation versus goblin tokens. I'm not as much expecting that from a Beseech deck, but I'm probably still going to respect it. This gets me these six cards, and then it's just the question, like, do I want to do any of this other stuff? And the rest of this stuff is kind of medium some of my cards are still medium in the deck. Samwise is not ideal. Charming Prince is not ideal. Lauren is slow. Jacklave is slow. I think I'm going to submit like this. I don't know that I believe in this hand. It has a brainstorm to look at some cards. My opponent was actively playing around Wasteland, and I also showed them a Wasteland. I also just like don't literally don't have anything to put in off of vile. I'll ship this one. This is a much stronger start. I will keep this throwing the single solitude back into the deck. And now I have an initial counter spell. I have another piece of interaction. And if I find a reanimate, I can do some pretty cool stuff with it still. Uh, Caracas is not the sort of draw that I am hoping for. We're just going to play Underground Sea and pass with the intention of troll cycling end of turn. Oh, shit. Uh, no, I've got a Wasteland. It's fine. Uh, but that's definitely scary. Uh, so I guess I'm glad that I know about that now. I wonder if that was in the deck in game one. Okay, so I have white mana now. I probably don't need to work towards white white immediately. I probably want to work actively towards black black for grief or like ponder into reanimate. 
Let's do this. Uh, there's Skyclave. Uh, yeah, so we'll pass the turn. Wasteland Urza Saga in my opponent's upkeep or in response to a fetch. Goodbye, Saga. I don't feel safe yet. And I probably won't. Like, against these sorts of decks, you really want to, like, have a hate bear in play and then back up the hate bear with something else. Uh, I'm I'm not going to attack this brainstorm here. All right. Force of Negation is almost good. I'm always playing Caracas. And now I'm going to play Charming Prince. The question is, is gaining three life and making my opponent have two storm count higher to kill me better than scrying two? Since next turn, I can just put Yori into, into my hand. I think the life is better, but it's very, very rare for me to choose life in Legacy. A handful of the Beseech lines are just, like, very good at dealing 20 damage specifically. So I think I like how I've gone about this. Four cards in Graveyard. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay. So now I have three counter spells available, right? Hardcast, Force of Negation. Or no, I guess I don't have three available this turn. Um, let's put this into my hand. I'll still have the same number of counter spells available, but this uses my mana for this turn cycle. I want to pause a little bit on my end step. They redrew a card from Brainstorm. There's another Brainstorm. I'm going to let them have that. I'm just surprised that they didn't shuffle and are now like willing to re-brainstorm like that. Not quite sure what that indicates about the hand. Uh, fuck that. I don't like that. I know what that means. That means uh, Veil of Summer. So I never want to drop having two counter spells available. And Grief is less good. But beginning on my next turn, I will just have three counter spells available. I can hard cast a force of negation, pitch cast a force of negation, pitch cast a force of will. Soul Herder. That's interesting. Back for two. Do I play that? I drop one counter spell to play that, but I vastly increase my clock and also gain three more life. This is where I don't have enough games against Beseech to know exactly how much storm they can build up. There's only blue cards in Graveyard right now. Um, I don't think I play Soul Herder. It feels more important to me to hold up the counter spells, And then after I win a first counter spell war, I can start thinking about playing the Soul Herder. Got an upkeep pause from my opponent here. I don't know why, because he shuffled with Ponder, so the top cards of the library aren't known. All right, we're beginning. Nope, we're just not discarding. Understood. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards in hand. I might want to just cycle this here. I think I want to cycle this here. Just pick up a Tundra. Skyclave then becomes a live card again. In a way that it wasn't a second ago. Solitude is back. Charming Prince attacks. Only goes to 11. I can play Skyclave and take out Lotus Petal and then be down to two open counter spells. I think I would just prefer all three. I think the counter spell is much more valuable than the one additional mana here. Yes, you may do that. No shuffle again. Doesn't look like they're going to play a card, though. It looks like they're just going to discard, uh, which I'm good with. Guarding Cabal Ritual. Okay. I've got five mana. I can now play a Flash Elemental on my opponent's turn. They are at nine. Uh, yeah, no, no other plays from me. Uh, yeah, so I, I respond to this one. I will A. Uh, let's do that differently. I will cast Force of Negation. Feels like my opponent has another one. That is a Force of Will. I guess I force of negation that, probably pitching the Yorian. Goodbye. 
So something like Fluster could then happen here. A Pact of Negation. That's awkward. So I can counter the Pact, but then my opponent can just, like, go off afterwards. So I think I let their stuff happen from here. And don't increase the storm count further. All right. Force of Will is off. Solitude is still on. Storm count's already five. So let's see how bad this gets. Yep. So that is a Beseech. And this is why I wanted to find a Hate Bear so badly. That's the Gaia's Will. So this now lets them cast all their stuff out of their graveyard. And I imagine we are now at the point where my Solitude gaining me two life doesn't matter anymore. Yep. So that's 26, so my opponent will cast another Beseech, and then I'm done. Act of Negation is good to know about for game three. Yeah, so there's Tendrils with 15 copies. That's like 30 damage. My Solitude does not save me. So we'll move to a game three. I could board in the Magus of the Moon as a surprise that can make it harder for my opponent to Veil of Summer while also going off. That is maybe more exciting than the Solitude. I will buy that. My opening hand is reasonable here. Lavinia is very good in this matchup, and I can Brainstorm to protect her if need be. And I have Force of Negation as well, so I'm not expecting to just die on turn one. Uh, land Pass. We'll be getting probably Tundra and Underground Sea. Just kind of ignoring the fact that Magus of the Moon is a thing given the texture of this initial hand. So end of turn, do this, grab Underground Sea, Island Cycle, or Tundra. Now, I can't use Force of Negation to back up this Lavinia, but luckily that did not matter here. Uh, this, this ability is going to be very strong. Rolls okay. I'm not sure how to play the remainder of this turn. I think it involves brainstorming and then troll shuffling. Think off of this land. Holy shit. Okay. Recruiter of the Guard goes back. One cantrip goes back. Swamp cycle here. Um, shouldn't normally need white white. Grab this anyway, though. Make the land drop. Let's attempt the grief itching Baleful Strix. If it gets a Veil of Summer out of my opponent's hand, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to counter that or anything. Like, it's very good value for my opponent, but my counter spells are here to mess with Lavinia. Or sorry, to protect Lavinia. They don't think my opponent wins through her. Like, that is very tough to do. Just no artifact mana, no Gaia's Will lines. Ooh. That's neat. I play that now. And make my ponder slightly worse. Let's bash in. One is at 16. I can put the Yori into my hand and hold up Caracas, or I can ponder. I think I want to ponder. Since I got Scrubland earlier, though, it does mean that I drop Hardcast Force of Negation for doing that. Finding, like, an Orcish Bowmasters or something is really good, though. Or Reanimate. Okay, I've, I've talked myself into that. Let's say one layer of protection is good enough for this turn cycle. Reanimate. Two Reanimates, even. I will take both. Uh, Reanimate targets Grief the first time, I believe. Just kind of force the disruption here. All right. Uh, I will take out the Beseech the Mirror and pass the turn. Uh, we are in very good shape here. Uh, remember, Pact of Negation is currently off because of Lavinia. Uh, we have our opponent on a two-turn clock if I reanimate the troll, just by the way. Yeah, uh, GG's. We put a win on the board. All right, we're looking at an awkward one here. I can grief my opponent on turn one. However, the mana is really awkward. 
I don't have things to put in with Troll. I think I just ship this one. Like, I can play Planes, Troll Cycle, get a second land drop, not have played Aether Vial on one, or like play Aether Vial on one, Troll Cycle on turn two, can't brainstorm in the Troll Cycle. Um, I, I just think I'd die if my opponent is doing something cool. Um, this one's a keep, and I just decide what goes back here. This card is not generically good. I'm going to choose that one. And we'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. I have the emergency stop for if my opponent is playing a combo deck. It is Boromir. That counters free spells. Yeah, that can, that can happen. So my opponent is some flavor of initiative of some kind or something of that general ballpark. Cool. So let's underground see, fetch Tundra, and just drop a blocker for that. Sure. That's fine. That represents things like solitude. Now this can give creatures my opponent control indestructible, which can matter versus a Baleful Strix a little bit later on. But that still involves trading. All right. So we're chilling. Reanimate. Well, that's interesting. I think I'm just going to brainstorm here rather than recruiter immediately. Eh. We'll put back the free cards and hope to just outvalue my opponent. I'll fetch a scrubland for variety here. Now my Charming Prince blinking Strix. That's okay. It's not better than okay, it's just okay. I don't think Orcish Bowmasters is doing a lot here. Oh, it's at 17. And if we get some opposing like Swords to Plowshares or whatever off of this, I'm fine. I don't think my opponent has Swords to Plowshares or Solitude though, or at least they don't want to use it right now because they would have used it on their turn to attack for three. All right, Force of Will is back. Not what I want to see. So they're going to touch the Spirit Realm, my Baleful Strix out of the way. Am I fine with that? Yeah. Not that I can counter it. But I think I'm fine with that, regardless. I don't mind the three damage. That's not that big of a deal. I would love to just find Source of Plowshares, take this out, and start attacking. But let's just do a line that is guaranteed to be respectable. I'm going to pick up a second Underground C. I can just hold up Bowmasters for when my opponent attacks, and that's pretty good. I can even Ponder. I was planning on Recruitering for Lauren. I, I dislike how I planned this turn. Wasteland. Yeah, that would have been good if I just played my Cantrip first and then Wastelanded this. Less good now. I'm going to go ahead and shuffle that. A Baleful Strix. Uh, I'm good with that. I think that's better than the Bowmaster's play. Uh, hard to say whether or not I ended up in a better or worse position because of the lines that I took. We'll see. Oh, okay. All right, opponent not willing to attack on in and just doesn't have gas afterwards. Raw step play? You got my attention. At this point, I'm fine attacking with Charming Prince. I can bow masters as a follow-up if need be. Uh, but let's put the pedal to the metal here. All right, yep. Opponent calls. I follow up with Bowmasters. We'll attempt to ping that. My opponent will do this. This is fine. I will Swamp Cycle. Get a land. Play a land. Reanimate a troll. And now my Force of Wills are back online. And I have, in theory, a two-turn clock. Is that alternate Cavern of Souls? That's annoying. Uh, yes. Uh, yep, that's fine. A Lorien revealed. Whether or not I leave up Force of Will is kind of interesting. Well, let's play Recruiter and figure out what I'm getting here. Sam returned to play. Turns to hand. 
Just another Baleful Strix is probably fine. So I will cycle Lorien Revealed, pick up a land, play a new Baleful Strix, draw a card, bash, bash, hit my opponent for seven. They are at eight. We've got most things covered except for maybe fourth Aer Lingas. Um, yeah. So, like, my problem with Boromir in Legacy is that it's not very good at winning the game. Like, when you compare what Boromir does to, like, an initiative creature or some other spiraling threat, Boromir fares poorly. Fares poorly. Like, against my deck specifically, that is running Force of Will and Grief and Solitude, it does some work, but, like... My, my opponent still lost. Um, and honestly, their hand probably just should have been a mulligan. So, what do I want to do in this matchup? Extra removal spells are probably nice, including Prismatic Ending for things like Chalice of the Void. Grief is going to be better than counter spells on average. So, like, I'm not the biggest fan of Force of Negation here. My Bowmasters are pretty medium. I might keep a bunch just to be black cards and something that can go wide. I'm not the biggest fan of this. It's white-black for the purpose of pitch cards, but I don't think it has a lot of appeal beyond that. Sam's really good with Strix for, like, chump-blocking things, but a lot of times, like, Season Dungeoneer and Friends happen. I think this is too situational. Recruiters are slow. I think I do that. That's okay. I don't know how excited I am about playing this matchup, which I think is something that I've said in most of the rounds. The opponent's just so good at going under me. Um, and doesn't do anything. All right, Brainstorm isn't great to be played on turn one without a cycler. I'm gonna ship this. This hand, this hand I can work with. I think pitching Aether Vial number two. That is very much not to say that this hand is perfect, because it's got issues. But I'm not stone cold dead to anything, which I like. Sure. Yes. Sure. Force of will it. I force of will it. Yep. Force of will, pitching brainstorm. Opponent's land is City of Traitors, which maybe means that it'll be awkward for them to play a follow-up threat. Um, it's kind of what I am hoping for here. Um, assuming my Aether Vial doesn't randomly get eaten by an opposing Lauren or something. I can tick Vial probably up to two pretty comfortably and then try to play the game from there. Okay, sure. Um, that's awkward. Lauren will eventually answer that problem. Uh, this is maybe not going to be an exciting game of Magic. This is going to be a lot of Drago in all likelihood. Yep, it's a lot of draw go. No play for my opponent. No play for me. No play for my opponent. No play for me. No play for my opponent. Oh, play for me. Let's go. Uh, with one land drop, I can prismatic ending this. All right, Caracas is online. Uh, no follow-up play for the opponent, though. All right. I now get to start playing Magic. I think I start with this one. That just takes this out, and I can start ticking the Vial up towards 5. I don't care if my opponent bounces the Lauren out of play to re let me reuse it. I think that's something that is going to favor me with multiple copies of Solitude just chilling in my hand. Oh, fuck yeah. I got a card out of Lauren. That's very exciting. Right, that is Cavernous Souls. Luckily, my hand is just full of removal rather than full of counter spells. Uh, Magus of the Moon may resolve. That is okay with me. I might even leave it in play. Like, my opponent does not have access to white mana, and my counter spells are live. I'm going to take two damage from that Magus and just play another Aether Vial. Yeah. And then at their end of turn, I can Swords to Plowshares it. And that just keeps them from casting white spells for a turn. 
Might even leave it in play for longer, honestly. I'm at 19. Yeah, fuck it, you can have the Magus. Tick up both vials. Plague Engineer. Sure. I'll cast a Recruiter. Yes. I can just get a Baleful Strix right now. Draw some extra cards, get a Flyer. Full Herder is very good another turn down the road. I think I want the Evasion that Baleful Strix offers in play in case my opponent plays an initiative creature. I also got another mountain, which we're good with. All right, opponent continues to attack with Magus. That's fine. We're not trading away Strix here. Yeah, I've just stuck my opponent with a handful of cards. Or I guess they stuck themselves. A Ponder. Yeah, I'm fine casting that. Reanimate? Another turn from now, I get my own Season Dungeoneer. Sure. Berry Ponder. Reanimate on top. Draw Swamp. No Shuffle. Land Drop. Guess I'll do my attacks for two. Something, something, something. Basic lands are good. Alright, opponent's at 18. I'll go ahead and cast this Naming Human. And, uh... We've got really good options. A Solitude, sure. <laughs> oh, that's delicious. That's delicious. That doesn't happen very often. Swords the Plowshare is my guy. Yep. My opponent lost Magus, Solitude, White Pitch Cards, Swords in order to get to where we are now. Anointed Peacekeeper and Resolve. That is by no means a problem. Like, if they name my Aether Vial to make my Aether Vial more expensive, I just source the Flashers their creature. Ugh. That was, that was a beating. I almost feel bad. Um, I've got a hand that's a little tough to evaluate. I'm kind of missing some stuff. It's fine if I'm playing against like a fair blue matchup. I think I'm going to keep this. And if it looks like my opponent is playing unfair magic, then I can grief on turn one. Probably fair magic. So I don't think I'm going to grief on turn one. I'll play Tundra and pass, I think. Yep. So could be playing against a control deck. Could be playing against like a Bant up the Bean Spout deck. Could be playing against or Bean Stock. Could be playing against Cephalid Breakfast. Looks like Bant. Ooh. How many Force of Negations do I have in the main deck? One. I don't think I brainstorm for that then. All right. You get your land drops. Strix over hold up Bowmasters. I think so. Bowmasters will be good later too. I don't think I have to just turbo out. Bowmasters. If I like poke my opponent with a Strix a couple of times, they might remove it with the swords to plowshares. That is Teferi, which does not line up well versus Orcish Bowmasters. Oh, they just plussed F. Okay. Got it. So I probably now brainstorm to sculpt a plan. I reanimate stuff is significantly worse versus Teferi. Yep, there's some reanimates, all right. We still doing that? We're probably still doing that. Um, Barry Caracas, Barry reanimate. Make land drop. Grief pitch Strix. Take something out of my opponent's hand. Oh, no. Take Merktide Regent. Take the thing that kills me. Reanimate the Grief. Take the Brainstorm. Keep my opponent stuck with those lands. Love Tap to Fairy. And we'll go from there. I get to F6 my opponent's turn as uh, to Fairy makes me sad. And if the Teferi ends up going to 1, I can either Bowmaster attack it to take it out or... Um, ba 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 Orcish Bowmasters it out of play. 
They can play a second Teferi and bounce my Strix, which they are going to do, but then that sets up my Orcish Bowmasters to bring my opponent's Teferi and kill it. And then that turns back on my instant speed removal, which I am down for. Oh boy. Oh no, not Force of Will. Reanimate Bow Boy. Like I planned for this. Bowmasters ping to fairy. And now we have Grief and Baleful Strix as ways to sort of get value as this game goes on. <laughs> My opponent has typed Boo in chat. Yeah, that was pretty good. I was pretty happy with that. All right. So now we get to play the game of Orcish Bowmasters versus Up the Beanstalk, where I get to slowly grow this Orc Army token, but my opponent will get a decent amount of card advantage along the way. So those are things. Not sure if I play Grief or Baleful Strix this turn. I think I play Grief. And I can hold up a Caracas for a random legendary creature or to cast Swords of Plashers. Oh, shit, my opponent conceded there. Don't want to give away the spice. Um, so what am I expecting from my opponent? Murktide, Force of Will, Up the Beanstalk, to Fairies, Swords to Plowshares, Leyline Binding, potentially, over Prismatic Ending? Uh, maybe, uh, is it Temporal Mastery, the Miracle One? Is Lavinia good enough here? Lavinia is kind of neat at stopping the more expensive stuff my opponent can do. I'm digging ETB value creatures. Don't know that I want to mess around with anything like this. I can prismatic ending up the beanstalks. Fourth Air Lingas is a... Or no, sorry, they were in Bant. I don't know that they are hot Bant for sure. I'm going to board that out. I'm going to assume that my stuff being indestructible is not amazing, but nuking my opponent's graveyard and getting rid of Uro could be. Samwise feels medium. Are my counterspells actually just, like, even good? Like, is there any card that is good enough that I want to use two of my cards? Maybe I force of will, but don't force of negation. I'm not enough in red that I have pyroblasts that trade evenly. I don't have something like flusters. My opponent could have Veil of Summer. Yeah, maybe I just, like, say F my counter spells and do something like this. Or no, sorry, there's this guy, and then I have more outs to Uro. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is fine. It's possible that this matchup is slow enough that I'm underestimating how good uh, Samwise could be as well at just recycling fetch lands. Medium looking hand. I don't think I am going to mulligan though. It feels to me like raw card count is definitely going to matter in this matchup. So if I cannot mulligan, I'm good with that. Uh, no. Charming Prince is fine. Good when it works. I don't necessarily expect it to work though. All right. My opponent fetches the second time. I expect this to be an up the beanstalk. Otherwise, it's just like a ponder shuffle. All right. No immediate shuffle. That will presumably still happen. I know my opponent has life from the loam. I still just want to wasteland them here. I don't want them to just immediately go and drop a Teferi. The life from the loam is also probably a one of. It's a little awkward if my opponent then goes like land drop life from the loam, but you know. No end of turn brainstorm. All right. But no shuffle. They've hit their land drop. And uh, I'll just play Strix. I don't think I'm going to grief my opponent trying to take something like a Teferi. I don't think that's what this game is about right now. Um, well, that, um, that draw changes things. That draw probably makes it so that this is worth doing. Let's see what my opponent's got going on. Ooh, okay. Um, we definitely got the read on what my opponent was doing. If I take Force of Will, my opponent can't Force of Will my Reanimate on Grief. I think I'm just going to take the Endurance, though, so that my opponent can't blank my Reanimate. 
Let's take that out. We're in for a grind, folks. All right, let's give the little old love tap here. Get my opponent for one. Go to 17. Am I ever brainstorming this turn? Yeah. Because I don't really like Prismatic Ending all that much right now. Ooh. There's some weird draws. I'm just going to end up putting back two lands from this and fetching. Um, I think since two of my griefs are already gone, I don't have to get black here. I'll just grab Tundra, have more access to blue. And let's attempt the reanimate on the grief. All right, opponent does not fire off Force of Will. Oh, cool. I'm getting a Swords out of it immediately. And then I get a second card here. This is one less. So if my opponent fetches say, a trap. This costs three mana. <laughs> I think I'm going to take a Leyline Binding. All that good. We'll see if they have a fun land to fetch. And by that, I mean, like, a try land. Negative. Okay, so there are other lands in the deck to further decrease Leyline Binding. Um, that's fine. Let's start with Brainstorm. Another reanimate? I can reanimate their Endurance. That's pretty good. Put back Prismatic Ending Arrakis. And then I'll go ahead and fetch a C. Uh, actually, I'll fetch a Scrub. Bash in with Strix. Opponent goes to 15. And now we're going to kind of uh, do some wiggling here that encourages my opponent to use resources. So I'm going to attempt to blink this Strix and see if my opponent wants to blow Leyline Binding. They do not. I'm going to save Reanimate for one turn cycle. Cool. I'm not going to immediately go after Endurance if they're not going to go after these. I don't want to walk more creatures unnecessarily into... Um, but, 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 but words like a supreme verdict or something. So I'll send them. I'm not willing to use leyline binding because it drops force of will without pitch casting. Would I like to reanimate now? I don't mind it. I'm not in love with it. I wish I would have swamp cycled at end of turn, but um, honestly, I forgot. Grab AC. Do this. Attempt reanimate target endurance. I imagine trades with a force. Nope. Nuke my opponent's graveyard for Uro purposes. And now we'll do the thing that hedges against like a Terminus or a Supreme Verdict of putting my Yorian into my hand. All right. We'll just keep sending in with creatures. Eventually that Leyline Binding gets used. On is at six. This is lethal on board. I'm okay playing a grief. I still have a bunch of extra creatures left. If something goes wrong. All right, we trade for a force of will. This is fully what I wanted. Um, theoretical lethal on board, but we know my opponent has leyline binding to help out with that. All right, there's land drop. Sure. That takes out the endurance, as it's the thing with the highest power here. And then Life from the Loam. Uh, that is okay. My opponent has a land in hand and force of will. So I swing in for three. Putting my opponent to two. And then I think I'll do something cute. I do love cute things. I will Yorian, Blinking Charming Prince, and Baleful Strix. I will move to my end step. <laughs> And uh, my opponent is done with me. Uh, just finishing explaining the line, I then would have used Charming Prince to blink out Yorian as well, and I would have gotten to repeat that process if I so desired. So I'm obviously not the biggest fan of Esper Vile in the first place, and this was an okay showing for the deck list. I love having access to the troll package. I do think this fixes some of the things that I disliked about the deck. But 
even with access to the like grief scam troll package, it's still a little slow. I think I boarded in the extra copies of Grief in every single round. That's maybe an indicator that they should just be in the main deck. And ultimately, I'm not really sure if this deck is better than other things taking advantage of like Troll, Grief, Orcish, Bowmasters. Like, there were very few times where I got a crazy like Recruiter of the Guard, Soul Herder loop going. And a lot of times, like, my value town stuff was just happening with, like, Strix and Bowmasters and, like, Grief Reanimate, Troll Reanimate. Um, so I, I'm still not the biggest fan of this deck, but, like, this change definitely wins it some points in my personal books. Magus of the Moon uh, definitely won us some games, although that is... That was actually my opponent's Magus of the Moon, if memory serves, so I don't know whether or not we count that. Um, but conceptually, in spots like that, it's going to be good. I, I think I give this one the, the shaky thumbs up, where I maybe don't recommend it for a full-on tournament, but this list feels competitive. Uh, let me know down in the comments below kind of what your thoughts are about this one. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day, and if you end up needing to pick up any paper magic cards, check out Cool Stuff Inc. Use promo code THRABINU to save 5% on your order, and folks, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. See ya!